Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Megan and I am a homeschool mom to six kids. Today's video is going to be all about homeschooling with little ones, whether it be babies, toddlers, pre-K. We're going to chat for a second about some tips and tricks that I've found that can maybe make homeschooling with those little ones running around a little bit easier. Now, today's video is actually a collab with my friend Jill over at That Homeschool Life with Jill. There are other mamas involved in this collaboration as well, so make sure to check out the playlist down below to get some more tips, tricks, and tidbits from other mamas who are in the homeschooling trenches with little ones as well. So homeschooling in general is no easy task, not even for someone who has previously been a teacher. I taught public school for many years before I stayed home with my children to homeschool them, and I never in a million years thought that this is where I would be. I absolutely love homeschooling, even on its hardest days, <laughs> when I don't feel so grateful for it. Um, I step back and remind myself how grateful I really am and how much the hard parts are so worth it in the end. Now, as I mentioned, I am a mom of six kids. My oldest is 11 and my youngest just turned two. So I have been in many ages and stages of having little ones while homeschooling. At one point, my four oldest kids, they were four all under the age of five at one point. So I have been in many dynamics throughout the years to experience what it's like homeschooling with little ones. Now, I'm gonna give you a few things that have helped me or a few ideas that maybe I haven't tried myself, but I've seen other people utilize and it's been successful for them. So let's get started talking about a few of those. The first one that I want to talk about is just getting them involved in the learning process. Now, if you have been around my channel for any length of time, you know that I like to use what I call family subjects. So like our science and our history, our Bible, those are the subjects that we as a family do together. They are subjects that are easy to tailor up or down depending on the age range of your kids and so I like to do those together. Now, one of the things that I really like to do is get my little ones involved in the learning process, even if it's completely over their heads. Honestly, our day goes a lot better when they feel like they're right there with us, a part of the family. So that would be my first tip that I would give you guys would be just making them feel like they're a part of the family and learning with you. So we've had many times where we've had toddlers sitting in the middle of the table while we're doing a science or history lesson um, <laughs> where they're rolling around in the floor during read aloud time. All of those things are completely normal. Now to go along with that comes my second tip and this is to provide alternate activities for them, but also kind of training them. I hate using that word, but really that's what it is. Um, kind of training them to self-entertain. So from a very, very young age, I love for my kids to have some independence in playing. So even my babies um, who are you know, you know how it can be with nurslings. Sometimes they want to be attached with mommy all the time, but I have always tried to make it a point to put them down and let them have tummy time without me sitting there entertaining them. Um, it's funny because I look back when I had my first son and I can remember like during his tummy time, I would lay in the floor with him and I would do everything to try to stimulate and entertain him. When in reality, they don't need that. They learn so much from the world around them and just from watching what's going on and things like that. And so from a very young age, I try to give them the opportunity to gain that natural independence. Now, obviously, if they're crying and things like that, then yes, I pick them up. But um, just offering them the opportunity 
to learn to entertain themselves and play by themselves and things like that. Um, a lot of times during our reading time, our read aloud time as a family, what I will do is I will give them some little quiet toys to play with at my feet when they're babies and they'll sit there and they'll play for a second and then a lot of times they'll climb back up on my lap, which is totally fun. But all of that helps to kind of get them into the routine of learning to play on their own. And so that has been really important for us. So the providing other activities. I actually did a video on busy bins for toddlers. And um, I will link my video down below, but it there are so many different types of busy bins and I think they're amazing and wonderful. But don't overwhelm yourselves trying to make them. In the video I'm gonna share down below, it's just really easy. Like I tried to use things that we already had on hand to make these busy bins. So make sure to check that out if you're looking for some easy ideas to use for that. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is we all have those days where they're incredibly hard and we feel like we're getting nothing done. But I want to encourage you to utilize nap time for those heavier, more intense subjects. So like reading and math, um, for us, the more intense subject that we need to focus more on is actually reading. I have um, two struggling readers, one just a little, the other one um, is actually has dyslexia. And so he requires a lot of really focused one-on-one -on -one time. Um, and I have found the best time for that is actually during nap time. We have tried to do really intense focused learning during normal times of the day, and I have found that actually it's more frustrating than productive because our little ones need us sometimes. And if we're doing a 45 minute reading lesson, that's not always a feasible thing. So I find it more productive to save really intense subjects for nap time when those little ones are down for their naps. Okay, so the next one kind of goes along with the first one. Sorry, my voice is really scratchy right now. But the first one, um, or the next one kind of goes along with the first one. And that is to provide them with their own learning activities. And I don't mean spend a lot of time gathering this or doing this. Um, keep it really informal. But when we are focusing in on everyone else and doing school with everyone else, our little ones sometimes can feel a little bit left out, even if we're including them in those family subjects. And I find that even spending five minutes to just really pause and read a book with them interactively or just look at um, Usborne has these really awesome sticker books where you take different bugs and stick them on the pages and things like that. I've sat and I've done that with my little ones before. Um, the dry erase early learning books, those are wonderful for when we're all sitting at the table doing school and they want to be involved. You hand them their little book with their dry erase pen and they do that. Um, and again, using those busy bins and things like that, making them feel like they're doing their own school, just like their older brothers and sisters can really be a helpful tool as well. Um, and let's face it, sometimes they just need or want our attention for a good little five minutes. So it's important to keep that in mind through the years. There have been moments where I have let myself get really frustrated or flustered because I had a constant interruption from a little one. And then I realized, you know what? They just want literally a few minutes of my attention and setting a few minutes aside to just stop and give them that. Um, it makes them, it fills their love cup. It does. It fills their love cup. Toddlers have love cups too. Okay. So this last suggestion is not something I have ever utilized. However, I know several people who have, and it has been extremely effective for them and their families. So the first thing, well, I'll go ahead and mention both of them. Um, but that is, if you are in a point in your life where you really just need another helping hand, I wish so many times that I had had this. Um, but 
really and truly, it was more of a financial issue for us as to why I've never been able to utilize this in the past. But if you have the ability to do this, I would encourage you to do so um, and not have any shame in it whatsoever. And that is to either utilize a parent stay out program or to have a mother's helper. Now, if you're not familiar with what those are, Mother's Day Out is actually a two day a week program. I think a lot of places will let you do it just for one. It's usually from nine o'clock in the morning until two, a couple of days a week. And it just allows you a moment to get away, run errands or drop them off, go back and have two really good homeschool days of no interruption. So, I would have loved to have had that opportunity at many times throughout my life. So if you have the ability to do that, I would encourage you to take advantage of that opportunity if you can and if you would like to. The other thing I mentioned was the mother's helper. This is usually a teenage girl that will come to your home, um, probably a teenage girl within your homeschooling community. You can ask around. Usually people will know what a mother's helper is, but it is usually a young teenage girl who will come into your home and she will play. You could have her play with the little ones. You could have her do the laundry or the dishes and play with the little ones or however you want to utilize just a little extra help in your home for a few hours a week, a few hours a day, whatever you can do. But I, like I said, I have had some friends who have utilized both of those options. And admittedly, I've been a little bit jealous. <laughs> the very last thing I want to leave you with is this, and this is probably the most important thing. And I probably should have put it at the very beginning of the video. But honestly, on those days when you are feeling the most overwhelmed and the most beaten down and the most frustrated, and at your wit's end with these tiny little humans. Those are the days that I find that I have to keep myself constantly in check. And I don't always do the greatest job at it, but constantly keeping my heart and my mind focused on my purpose as a mother, that it is to grow and nurture these little hearts and try my best to instill and cultivate in their little hearts a love for the Lord. And I can't do that unless I am exuding that as well. And again, I'm not always the greatest at doing this. That's for sure. I fail every day. <laughs> keeping that mindset, that eternal mindset, and keeping our eyes and our hearts focused on the Lord as much as possible, that is what's going to get us through the season of homeschooling with little ones. Now, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video today. Hopefully, you found either some encouragement or a tip or trick or two that can help you in homeschooling your little ones. If you didn't find it here, make sure to head over to the playlist and see what these other mamas have to say as well. Thank you so much, guys. Hit that subscribe button, and I will see you on future videos.